tell your mom and dad's name and their relation, their how they met, oh. and you know, kind of like the little story. Yeah, well, my dad was from St. John's, and uh, my mother was from Rama, New Mexico. Where? Rama, that's oh, okay. south of Gallup, New Mexico. Yes. It's kind of up in the hills there, the mountains. Um, I think she came to St. John's to go to school. She, something anyway, she got to know my dad, and uh, he went on a mission to the southern states, and she went on a mission to the northwestern states at about the same time. Uh, and they corresponded some. I know uh, she showed me a, a letter, or he showed me a letter that she had written to him once. Uh, on one side, she'd write this way, turn, the, uh, um, turn it back, and the, the, each line was upside down. And then when she, on the other side, she started writing and around and around and around and ended in the middle. <laughs> So, so funny. Yeah, she was in, uh, she started in British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia, and then she ended up in Vancouver, Washington, oh. and several other places in Washington. Wow. For schooling or just her uh, That was her mission. Her mission, I see. Okay. She was on a mission. Okay, right, you said that, but I just wasn't sure. So, yeah. So, she was there in 1930 and 31, I guess, and they were married on March 1st of 1933. And uh, I was born no in November of 34. Had uh, a baby brother who died. Now what's his name? Uh, Brent, Lewis Brent. Okay. Uh, I, never did, it never was clear to me uh, what he died of. And the mom didn't really, I don't think they knew. It might have been crib death. Well, he was too old for crib death, I think. He was about a year and a half old. But her theory was that uh, my grandma had a big upright piano and uh, he had bumped his head on it, and she thought, you know, that, that may have had something to do with it. Oh, then I had my two sisters, Anna and Elaine, right. and that was the family. Okay. The, my grandfather came over from Switzerland when he was uh, 17, I guess. Right. They took the train, they got off in Navajo, which is uh, along Interstate 40, about 50 miles from St. John's. And uh, they had an uncle who was waiting for them. He took him to St. John. It took him two days to go 50 miles in the wagon. <laughs> and they arrived on July 4th of 1897, I think it was. So that's where they got started in St. John's, and that's where we got started in St. John's. And uh, what do you what um, what? What line of work was your dad in? My dad? Yeah. He was a high school dropout, <coughs> so he did what he could. Now he, most of his time, he worked as a uh, maintenance on the highway. Oh, okay. In the winter, he'd go out and drive a snow plow and things like that. Uh, then he bought a shoe repair shop that somebody was so selling. And he did both of those, kind of, for a while. And then when he retired from the state, he had the shoe shop, and he, he did, worked as manager of the movie theater. Oh. Means he took tickets and right. kind of organized the, the ushering and the cleaning and so on. Right. And uh, I worked as a projectionist there for some time. Oh. So that, that's what he did. My mom, she worked for, uh, I believe it was an insurance agent as a secretary. Uh, she ended up being the deputy clerk of court. She just, uh, you know, the, the assistant always does the work. Right. <laughs> and then her last job, she worked for the uh, agriculture department. She wrote the, the checks. They, they gave subsidies to the Navos for the wool. Oh. The, the Navos would sell their wool, and then the, I guess the U.S. would buy it. And right. They gave them a subsidy. I don't know. But uh, that's what she was doing when she retired. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Now, your dad, and, and you too, I remember your dad, he had a sense of humor that I was not accustomed to. Where did that come from? Not sure, but sometimes I think it p pops up in me a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Did Grandpa Roethlisberger or Grandma Roethlisberger have that? Uh, Grandma didn't. Grandpa, no, he was, he, Grandpa was pretty uh, straightforward. He uh, 
didn't like to talk on the telephone. Oh, no. When we'd call down there, he let other people do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> he was a gardener at the temple. Not sure. I'm not sure how that came about. Do you know what year he he went down there? Oh my! Uh, I think I was three. It was either before, during, or after the war. It was sometime in that period. World War Two. Two. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Do you know anything about his garden? Any stories that you heard about it? Did he have an orchard? Well, uh, I was born in their house in St. John's. Oh. Yeah, in the back bedroom. <laughs> no hospital in those days. Yeah. Uh, I remember out in the backyard, they had fruit trees. And I remember your mother and Josephine. I was just a little guy and they'd come out and they'd, uh, they'd play with me and talk to me. And my mom telling me that grandma hurt herself or something and she had to take care of her for a long time, like hurt her back or something. Uh, that's possible. They, when they lived to Mesa, moved to Mesa, we didn't have that close of contact. Right. And she, but, but Grandma was always sick. <laughs> was she? Yeah, she, uh, I, I'm not sure, she may have had a little hypochondria possibly. Okay. But Grandma was kind of, kind of a negative person. Oh, was she? Grandpa was pretty quiet. We had a, did you ever see the Roethlisberger book? Yes, I have it here. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Glor did you meet Gloria? Gloria Goodman, she wrote it? No, I, I well, I think maybe I met her when they had the re the 100 year reunion in St. Oh John's. yeah, yeah. Where they got uh, headstones for great, right. great grandpa. Right. Yeah, they, uh, well, she was, she and her husband were on a mission here in Tucson. Oh really, so you got to see her often. Yes, well, I talked to her on the phone about the headstone and the book and a few things. And then one day there was a knock on the door and I opened the door and there were a couple of missionaries. <laughs> it said Gloria Andrus. Oh, it was Gloria and her husband. Oh, nice. They came by. That's fun. But, uh, yeah. I don't know, funny things. I. In those days, that was during the Depression and the war. Right. And I don't remember, there were some real disasters happened, that, uh, not to us, but... Uh, I can't think, I'm sure there are things that were funny, but I can't think of any right, right at the moment. Right. Do you, now Uncle John, was it Uncle, uh, Grandpa Roethlisberger's brother? Yes. Um, was he the one who w lived in St. John's, the first one of the yeah. Roethlisberger's? Well, he was a brother of Grandpa. Oh, brother of Grandpa. Well, but then there was, uh, Grandpa had a, Oh, he, he was an uncle. There was an un old Uncle John, they called him. Then he had a brother, John, who, who died when I was, uh, I remember seeing him on the porch of their house in his, in his casket. Oh, on the porch of the house in the casket. Well, they didn't have a mortuary, and you know, they, they did things the old way then. Right. And uh, so he died. Uh, I was named for uh, my father's brother, Willie, who was dragged to death by a horse. Oh, okay. And he gave me his name and he gave me his nickname for my middle name. Oh, and what's, what's your? I'm William J. And my brother Mike, his middle name is the letter J. Really? Yes. Well, mine's J-A-Y. Uh, yours is J-A-Y, but his is just the letter J after you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Tribute to you. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember any traditions that the, the were carried on in the family? Uh, we didn't really have much in the way of traditions. We just uh, tried to make do. <laughs> right. We had a garden right. uh, during the that helped during the war. Right. Right. Milaka. And we had about 20. Huh? Milaka. Oh, we, oh, we had the cow. Yeah. Uh, there's I just think he was, it was a bull, wasn't it? No, it was a cow. It was a cow. Well, uh, mom and dad, I think, bought it. Uh, not long after they were married, or, or somebody gave her to it. And so my mom gave the cow the name of her sister, Leola. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can imagine, that didn't go over well. Right. So uh, I always knew her as Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they decided, no, they weren't going to call her Leola. They yeah. <laughs> call her Jersey. I had a, 
a time when I milked Jersey. So. Uh, what happened? Well, she she was uh, she had a a warped sense of humor. She uh, she could tell when I was in a hurry. Oh really? If I had something at school I had to go to. Right. She'd always do something off the. Usually she was waiting for me and. I'd milk her and we'd get on with things. Right. But if I was in a hurry, I had to go out there and she wasn't there. She was way up in the far corner of the pasture. Oh. And so I'd walk up there and I'd get about halfway there and she'd kick up her heels and run down to the other corner. Oh no. And when she got all excited, the milk wouldn't come down. And so that took longer oh. to milk and oh. She, she had a sense of humor, all right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of warped. Oh, my dad, he, had a, he bought a team of horses and there was one old workhorse he was going to use them for plowing. The old one, he was pretty steady. He was uh, calm and he'd do his work. And, but the younger one was, uh, he'd get spooked fairly easily. Wow. So my dad was out plowing one day and uh, the young one got spooked. And he took off. And that got the older one, the older one was harder to get excited, but he got him excited and away they went, dragging, oh, no. dragging the plow and tearing up the harness. And I remember my dad came in the house and he was just, he was furious. I don't think I've ever seen him so angry. Really? And many years after, he was thinking about that and thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, when I walked in the door, you said something like... I haven't seen you since the last time I saw you. Since the last time I saw you. What are some other types of things like that that your dad used to say? Well, he'd say, you're fine, how am I? That's right, that's right. Well, I was a pretty little guy. I was, what, about three or four years old. Right. And like I say, uh, your, your mom and Josephine would be out there right. playing with me in the backyard. Uh, and of course, being that age, I, I didn't notice anything special about right. it. Right. But I know Grandpa, he enjoyed gardens and trees and things like that. And I'm sure he did uh, pretty well at it. Right. And uh, pe some people might have been interested in that. Yeah. I wasn't at that age. Right. <laughs> Well, uh, when your uh, mother and Josephine used to play with me in the backyard, I, but my recollection wasn't uh, isn't too good of that time. I just remember them sitting in the trees and right. they'd kind of laugh and joke with me. And but uh, so I, I would say three or four. Okay. I wasn't terribly old. Right. Grandpa's church callings were at all? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, I. I think at one time he, I'm not certain, he may have been janitor there in St. John's. Okay. But then in, in Mesa, he was the gar uh, gardener. Right. Was he the head gardener or? I don't think so. Okay. I think he just, they, they had quite a few and I think he was one of the many. Right, right. Um, I think there's still some of the old growth trees that he probably. He may have had something to do with, yeah. I used to go over and sit on the grounds while he was working sometimes. Oh, did you? I'd go visit him. Right. Uh, I'd be there for a week or two and uh, right. I'd go over there. And there was a boy lived on the corner and we used to go sit under the tree and talk. Uh, I met him one summer and then the next summer he wasn't there. He died. Oh, sad. Uh, appendicitis. Oh, sad. But uh, one time we were sitting there on the grounds and they had peacocks. I didn't know if peacocks made any sound or not. Yeah. So I was sitting there talking with Johnny and I was like, Rack! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been frightening. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Um, tell me how you two met. Well, I was the uh, ward clerk. Uh, they had a Spanish language ward they just started. Uh, I was the ward clerk. Uh, she came from Guatemala to visit her sisters. Uh, she was getting, she got her uh, residency, immigrant resident, and uh, she wanted to have her uh, membership records moved into our ward. Well, I was the person she had to see, and uh, that went okay. And then I would get a phone call every now and then about, uh, she was teaching, a, I guess, gospel doctrine, where you find certain scriptures, and uh, okay. One day she told me I wasn't paying attention. And so we took care of that. And <laughs> <laughs> Got paid a lot of attention now. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> What's your favorite memory of Bill? 
¿Qué recuerdo tienes de mí? Él estabas trabajando en la obra del Señor. Oh, I was working in the Lord's work. Well, I had callings right. along the way. Right. What were your callings? What are your callings? Well, I've been a clerk a lot of the time. I, I was uh, an assistant in, in the high priest group one time. Um, of course, home teacher goes all the way through that. Right. Uh, I, d I don't remember a lot uh, beyond those. Rod's been a ward clerk for like a lot of years, like <laughs> a lot of years. Well, I've done it in, in a number of wards. Yeah. I'm a finance clerk right now. Oh, are you? And uh, I enjoyed that. I, I think it helped keep my mind active. I do the, cro the puzzle page in the paper every day. Oh. Nice. I cannot do those for the life of me. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's helping or not, but I kind of enjoy doing it. Well, I hear that people who do that kind of stuff don't have the problems of dementia. dementia. Yeah. Um, now, Grandma Roethlisberger had dementia. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, there in her last year, she was, uh, she was pretty far gone. I remember, I don't remember her living with us, but I remember stories that she came to live with us. Yes. And then um, because of, she had glaucoma, you know, where yes. parts, you can't see everything, you have black holes. You know? Yes. Uh -huh. So when she would try to walk, she'd be afraid she was going to fall into the hole because that's all she saw. Yes. The hole, you know. And I guess it got really, really bad. And um, the story that I heard is that um, they tried to find somewhere that she could go because it was interrupting the family so much. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, yeah. you know, but they had young kids they were trying to take care of too. Sure. Um, and uh, that dad went to the Arizona State Hospital, took her with him and said, I need help. And they said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And he said, if you don't help her, I'm going to leave her on your front door and you're responsible for that. <laughs> oh my. So basically that's kind of what happened. So she ended up, you know, they took her in. And I remember going, I was must have been five years old. I remember going and she would be in the wheelchair that had like the potty bottom, Yes. you know. Um, because they didn't do diapers then, I guess, or whatever. Oh. And uh, she'd be sitting in the chair, and mom would give me a comb or a brush, and I would just brush or comb her hair. Yeah. You know, while mom visited with her. I used to do a little of that too. She liked, liked, liked me to. I just, I guess I was bored. I wanted something to do, and uh, <laughs> and so she put up with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you remember any spiritual stories or anything? From from your dad or from grandma and grandpa or anything, remember anything like that? Uh, well, other than the the way the family came over from Switzerland, uh, they had a, a grandpa had a sister. Uh, uh, she was uh, not well. Madeline, uh, right? Madeline. She had uh, health problems all her life. She finally died in St. John's. And in that book, you probably saw where they, she was in her coffin. Right. With the, fa the family group picture, and there was Madeline in her coffin. But, uh, she was uh, in the hospital in Switzerland. And there were some women, uh, there was somebody from Argentina in that hospital. And some missionaries came to see her. And... Uh, oh, the woman from Argentina? Uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, they, they came to see her. Uh, well, the missionaries came to see whoever was in the hospital, right. and uh, my great grandfather at that time. I guess he was looking. He wasn't really pleased with the church they went to. He was looking for something better, so he talked to them. That's where it started. Now, great grandpa's name Jacob. Jacob. Jacob and Susanna Betchum. 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 Uh -huh. Okay, right. Jacob. 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 J is ah, is a Jacob. yeah. Yeah. In German, Jakob, with a K, Jakob. Okay, Jakob. Okay, and then Susanna. 
Yeah. So uh, that was something special. I remember I, I, when I was baptized. Uh, are you familiar with the Little Reservoir by St. John's? No. There was an irrigation reservoir. I guess the uh, when they put in an irrigation system, they built a dam, and uh, they they collected water. I guess coming down the river. Or so. I'm not sure exactly. I think that's where it came from. It was kind of muddy. That's where I was baptized. Oh, really? On July 4th. Oh, during the summertime. Well, that's good. I was thinking wintertime. I was like, oh, it'd be freezing. <laughs> yeah, it was summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah I have a memory in my mind for Grandpa Jay. Oh, do you? Robert's brother. Oh. When we go with Bill oh. to St. John's and show Ed, our first son. Ed was just a baby then. Right. He was a baby. He pick up the, 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 the baby and say like this in the head and say, he has a nice head. Oh. She, she liked the, the, the shape is, of his head. The oh. head is like the, the head of the Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cute. I cry when I yeah. listen that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. He, lo he, he was he loved and he called yeah. the baby like that. Yeah. Your dad was a very soft, gentle man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your mom, too. Th yeah. 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 When I worked in the sheriff's office up there one time, I found that he was in trouble with the law once. He was the janitor at the church, right. and he ran water on the street. Oh. And they gave him a ticket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> kind of sounds like something that's going to start happening here now because of the drought. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And worse in California. Oh, she was a sweet woman. Yeah. yeah. She, uh, in Raymond, New Mexico, they, uh, yeah. <laughs> her, I guess it was her oldest sister. <laughs> Uh, was uh, burned to death. Oh my she goodness. was standing in front of the fireplace in a nightgown. Oh my goodness. And it caught the nightgown. Oh my goodness. And they, I guess they hadn't invented uh, drop and roll or anything like that at that time. And, uh, oh, that's terrible. And I think grand, Grandpa was out milking the cows and I'm not sure where Grandma was, but... Uh, oh, that's sad. Terrible. But she was the only one that... And grand, um, my mom had only sisters, okay. no brothers. And my dad, of course, had brothers, but they, they died. Right. And he was left with a bunch of sisters. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. had an orphan in the family uh, on my mother's side, uh, New Orleans. Uh, we, uh, we still don't know her name, the, the mother's name. Oh, wow. Reuben was the, uh, we finally got a little bit of data on him. Right. Reuben, and they called her Georgiana, but I heard that that's not her name, but we don't know what her name is. Oh, wow. So, Georgiana is still kind of a mystery in the family. Yeah. Huh. Now, who was, she, that was on my On my mom's side. On your mom's side. Okay. The Lewis side. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, the, the one who, this great-grandmother, or, yeah, married Frederick Hamlin, who was a brother of Jacob Hamlin. Right. famous Gibbons who, um, I can remember right, sorry, uh, he was adopted into the Jarvis family because he was so impressed with the Jarvis family that he grew up with and those boys. So really? he, he, um, he was uh, adopted into the, the, I should say, the Gibbons family. Um, <laughs> and uh, he was one of the scouts that rode with Jacob Hamblin uh, and also helped to uh, uh, improve relationships between the natives and oh, yes, uh -huh. the Mormons. Yes. Yeah. Jacob Hamblin did a lot of that, and yeah. I guess this is someone who helped him. Yeah, yeah. Well, on my mother's side, my what was he, fourth great-grandfather, third, third great-grandfather, I think, Tarleton Lewis. He and his brother were at Hans Mill. Oh, really? His brother died of his wounds. Oh, dear. Tarleton carried lead the rest of his life, and I think he died at 85. Oh, wow. That was such a t catastrophe. That was a mob, right? Uh, yes. A mob attack on the Mormons there. And he was with Brother Brigham when they came into the valley, Tarleton was. 
he was the first bishop of Salt Lake. I think what happened there was they got there and they had this mob of people and Brother Brigham says, Tarleton, uh, would you, you be the bishop while we get things organized? And I think that's kind of how it happened. And then he sent him to different places uh, with the colonization. And he ended up being bishop everywhere he went. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's kind of the same thing that happened with uh, Andrew Smith Gibbons. Is he was part of that 147 people who came into the Salt Lake Valley to begin with. Yes. So that would have been your yes. family too. Um, and then he moved 13 different times to yes. wherever the you know he was told to go to do. Yes, they, there's a lot of yeah. that. Yeah. Well, uh, and then. Uh, Tarleton's, uh, I think it was his son, came through Tucson with the Mormon Battalion. Yeah. 1847. Yeah, we have we have a family member, I think Lakes, that came through on that. What, Mormon Layton? Battalion. Lake. 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 Either Lake or Gibbons, I can't remember which. Mike, down in, in Yuma, he helped, uh, my brother Mike, he helped, he was on the committee that erected the Mormon Battalion statue of a yes they have one here too yeah yeah he helped direct that one and he's on the committee for that and he has a replica a small replica of that soldier oh yeah yeah president hinckley was here to dedicate that that nice. monument nice I, he almost got to wear my hat almost got to wear your hat yeah he wasn't uh, feeling well that day and one of the security people there uh, i knew the guy he came around and he saw my hat and he thought, oh, well, uh, that would work. And so I, he says, would you be willing if President Hinckley needs to have a hat? Oh. I said, I'd be willing. Well, it, apparently he made it without it. Oh, so. that's <laughs> sweet. So did they keep the hat or did you get it back? Oh, no. No, I, they, I, I kept it, but they said, if, if we oh, should I call see, upon you, you'll, you'll know what it's all about. Right. Uh, yeah. <coughs> they didn't, but uh, yeah. oh, well. Yeah, yeah. I had heard that when Grandpa... Roethlisberger, Fred Roethlisberger, uh, Gottfried Fred Roethlisberger came from, with his family from Switzerland, that he stopped speaking his native language and he no longer played the violin. Did you, have you heard that? I don't know about the violin. Uh, I know that uh, I always spoke to him in English, although once in a while he'd uh, lay a German word on me. Oh. <laughs> like brot, bread. Oh, uh-huh. Kopf, head. He had a, uh, a bicycle, had a big basket on the front of it, and I, I guess I wasn't very big. I used to think it was really great that he'd put me in that basket and take me for a ride. Oh, how fun. Did ever share his testimony with you? No, Grandpa didn't talk a lot. He, Grandma did most of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, he, he didn't talk a lot, really. But uh, like I say, he worked at the temple, and he, uh, I believe they also did ordinance work, too. And uh, sometimes what they don't say speaks louder than what they do say. That's true. And I think that's, that's I think that's kind of what happened there. Yeah. My parents uh, would, uh, of course, we had 200 miles to go to the Mesa Temple, right. and uh, so they'd get a, an excursion together now and then, and they'd go. Uh, opportunities weren't frequent, but uh, whenever they could, they would do it. That's nice. And that that means a lot. What kind of fun things did you do? Oh, growing up in St. John's. No TV, no internet, no computer, no cell phones. So we had to make our own fun, but something kind of presented itself. Uh, there was a guy who lived next door to the high school. He was a ham radio operator. And uh, I'd walk by his house and I'd hear do, 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 do. Uh, what? I wonder what that's all about. So I went over and knocked on his door. Now he could have just told me, yeah, it's just my ham radio. He didn't do that. He so oh, come on in, take a look, and uh, come back. Learn a little bit about this. We'll help you get a license. Like me, a license? Nah. And he did. He stayed with me, mentored me. I got at, in 1948, I guess I must have been 14 years old, I got my ham license. Nice. And I just renewed it. Oh, really? Nice. So what do you do? Well, uh, since we started having babies, I, I put it on the back burner and it's still still there. <laughs> they don't have any equipment left or anything, so. Right. Uh, but uh, they, uh, 
The guy who taught me this, he was a big fan of Morse code. And of course, he was pretty heavy on that, and that's good because that was my first love, Morse code. Really? And so I talked to people all over the, well, not the world, I didn't have high enough power, but I did talk to a guy in Japan and over the world. And a few in Mexico, and uh, but mostly they were around the U.S. And in Morse code. In Morse code, yeah. And you can still pick up on that today? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And you just know exactly what the words are, and you don't, it's like reading a book to you, probably. Yeah. You don't, you, don't count, you don't count dots and dashes. What you do, you hear a sound. Like A is... used to the sound of what the words are. Yeah, you, uh, the letter E is... Dit. Letter T is... Da, it's a long. Right. Dit and a da, an a did da. And any time you hear did da, that's a. Wow. And so you just uh, get twenty six of those, and uh, maybe a few more for punctuation, and away you go. That's so incredible. There was a guy in Boulder City, Nevada. He was a buddy of the guy who, who got me started, and. Um, they, they got on regularly. So I would join in with them uh, pretty frequently too. I was in high school at the time. Right. But that was my internet in those days. Wow. I have never, ever heard anything so incredible to me. I mean, I knew there was Morse code, you know, but I always thought it was for like the military or whatever. But to use it personally yes. and, and get to know people around the world, Japan and Mexico, that is so cool. Well, it was required to get a license. I guess they took away that requirement now, but because they have everything else. Right. <laughs> but uh, you still, if you want to, you can still do it. They, they don't. You can get on there and still use Morse code if I'm you want sure. to. I'm sure. I'm sure that's probably. You know, sometimes when I listen to like a, a radio band, I bet that's what it is. I'm hearing, dee -dee 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 -dee. Uh -huh. and that's I bet what it is. <laughs> oh well, my. Well, they used to do that commercially. Uh, they they used to do that commercially. They were, they would send. Uh, I don't know exactly what it consisted of. And in the military, on the navy, they would use it a lot. Right. And I'm sure with what we, satellite and things now, you don't. They don't use that so much anymore. Right. But uh, now the guy who uh, taught me all this, he had been in the army. Uh, I didn't ever. He didn't ever tell me, and I didn't ever ask him about how he lost his arm, lost his left arm. I heard something about it. it was in a train wreck. Oh, no. He was in a train wreck. I don't know if it was in a foreign country or in the U.S. or where it was, but but he had his therapy and uh, he could do just about anything he wanted to do with one arm. Wow. In fact, he built his equipment. Really? And I'll, yeah, he he did well. Dang. And he uh, married his uh, brother's widow. Oh, really? And uh, wow. yeah. That just kind of like fell in his lap and just was probably meant to be. I think know? so. Looking back on it, he could have just uh, said, oh, another curious kid. Right. No, he just took me under his wing and uh, he saw it through. We did it. That's nice. Now, the brother who died, uh, that was uh, something happened in St. John's. There was a Ford garage there. Ever hear of Whiting Brothers? Yes. Well, that one of the brothers lived in St. John's and oh. they, they had a garage and a movie theater and a bunch of stuff. They had a butane gas truck in there one day, and uh, it was leaking, and it exploded. Oh, no. One end of the tank blew out the front door, oh, no. and uh, the sheriff and this guy's brother were standing there, and uh, the end of the tank got them, oh. and they didn't survive it. The other end of the tank went out the back door, and there was a wooden fence, and there was a woman walking by there, oh. and it drove her into that wooden fence, but she survived it. She, she was the mother of one of my classmates. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I remember when it happened, uh, I was looking down. We lived about a half mile out of town, and I'd look downtown and see all that smoke and everything. Right. Wow. Whiting's is a, was a gas station, service station, right? Uh, well, they, no, they had a, actually, they had a garage, they had offices there. Okay. Offices. Like, like auto repair garage? Uh, yeah, they did auto repair. Okay. And the movie theater. And let's see, what else did they have? They, uh, oh, I think they had some, sold some cattle feed or something. Oh, okay. But uh, they pretty much owned the, the, the center of town. Right. And it pretty well wiped out the whole block. Wow. That's amazing. 
Faith and Gary bought five acres of land in St. John's and moved there uh, back in the... Trying to remember, back in the late, no, mid, mid 70s, I think. Um, and the property that they were on, there was like a sawmill silo or something like that. Do you remember anything like that there? Uh, there was out west of town, it was close to where we lived, the Whiting Brothers had a, a box factory there. Now they did have a sawmill in, uh, I guess, Eager. But uh, they uh, the lumber. They bring lumber down there, and they make pieces for uh, tomato crate. I don't think they use that anymore. But uh, they made tomato crates. Uh, the, the pieces. Right. They they would send them somewhere, and they get assembled and so right. forth. I worked there. That was uh, was that my first? I think that may have been one of my first jobs. No, that wasn't my first. But uh, that was one of my first jobs working in that box factory. That's, that's really interesting. What 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 was life like? in St. John's? Pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. I mean, did you have a, like, like you did, obviously you didn't have a, a, a stop sign, a stop light, um, or did you have a stop light? We didn't. I think they might have a bl blinking red now. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, was there, so what did you do? Was there like a, a river or a pond that you would go swimming at? Uh, people would go up to the little reservoir or they could go a little farther to Lyman Reservoir, uh, go fishing there. Oh, fishing. Did you like fishing? Uh, yeah, I didn't go much. I went hunting rabbits one day with a friend of mine and we didn't get back till nine at night. And my dad was about ready to call the sheriff. But, <laughs> and it was cold, but uh, <laughs> when you're cold, you don't notice. Yeah, I guess so. Well, my my friend had a 30 out six rifle, a 45, and I had just a, a single shot 22. Guess who got all the rabbits? You did. <laughs> <laughs> He'd blow them away, but I. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Did you, did you like? Is, was that your basic meat source? Was the rabbits? Oh no, that was just. Uh, that was fun. Something to do. Something to do. Uh, the church and the school provided things like. Uh, we had. In school, they presented an operetta, HMS Pinafore, by Gilbert and Sullivan. Okay, that's right. Gilbert and Sullivan, uh, they were the political commentators in those days. Right. And they would write an operetta to poke fun at the at royalty. Right. And they did a lot of that in, in HMS Pinafore. It was on a ship, and uh, of course, uh, the captain of the ship, you know, he's uh, tied in with the government and all these things and yeah if you ever have a chance to listen to HMS Pinafore uh, uh, check it out okay. you might even want to read uh, oh in Wikipedia something about it maybe right. okay. but it was fun putting it on that's good and were you were you part of that you were in that place? oh yes I was well, what was your part a uh, small part I think I was a member of the chorus Grandpa sing. I heard he had a really good voice. Uh, he did. He, I know he sang in some quartets. He, I think he even sang in the choir some. That's Grandpa Jay, right? Right. Yeah. Grandpa, Grandpa, oh wait. Grandpa Jacob? Uh, no, Jacob. I did never know Jacob. Okay, Grandpa. Uh, Gotrid. We call him Fred. Okay, Everybody call right, him Fred. Right, right, right. When you say Grandpa, did you say Grandpa G or J? J. His name is R uh, Jacob Richard, and they called him Jay. Everybody knew him. Oh, you say, I want to talk to Jacob Richard. Right. I don't know him. Who's right. that? Jay? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. Right. Everybody right. knew him by Jay. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, he uh, he did some of that. So you guys got married in the temple here. Mm -hmm, in Mesa. Okay. And then um, did you start having children right away? Did you wait a while? Well, at our age, we figured we better get on with it. And uh, we had to wait, well, let's see, 85, I wait two years. Okay. Almost two oh. years. What year were you married? 85. 85, okay. Then Ed was. come, 86. Oh, uh, he was born in 87, January, okay. January of 87. So oh, it wasn't. You're the same age. 86. Huh? Un año, una al año. Ed is 86. 87. No. Uh-huh. <laughs>
Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, I was there when he was born. Is that really? That's yeah, cool. they were both both cesarean. Oh, were really? they? And Rosa, she she was a nurse in, in Guatemala, and so she'd been through a lot of those right. as a participant, you know. Right. And so she said, don't look, it's kind of bloody. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. <I'm... laughs> but uh, Ed, uh, <laughs> when the when the doctor uh, held him up, he was purple, and very quiet and still. And I I was holding my breath. I thought, oh man, I don't know what the doctor did, but he set him off, and then there wah and music. <laughs> so uh, nurses uh, took him over and uh, cleaned him up and put blankets. It was in January, and they put blankets and everything on him and. So a nurse came over to me and says, are you the father? First time anybody had ever asked me that question. Oh, and I thought, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's funny. By the time our daughter was uh, born, we pretty, it was a different hospital. Same, same doctor. But we pretty well knew the routine by then. Right, right. But Ed, he was uh, almost two years old, about a month shy of two years old. We tried to prepare him, but how do you prepare someone who's almost two years old? And uh, he didn't know what hit him. <laughs> what would he back? Say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm through having fun now. Take her back. Yeah, exactly. I want all the attention now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you you were a nurse in the hospital in Guatemala? Yeah. And were you a, a maternity nurse? Yeah, yeah. Uh, over there, we, we have uh, different roles because uh, when you supervise, uh, <laughs> in, digamos, uh, one in a week, you need all the uh, supervise all the hospital. Oh. One nurse, professional nurse for all the hospital. Oh. Yeah, she was a registered nurse. But when when <coughs> in the day. The role in the day, you have one section. Right. Uh, my special, yeah, my specialization, yeah. specialty. It is maternity. Uh, right. Yeah, you she liked. Anyway, <laughs> she liked pediatrics. Yeah. Well, there was something funny. Uh, in Guatemala, they had a uh, a family planning program. And the method of choice was the pill. Well, you have a bunch of Indian women. And so the nurse would uh, talk to them and say, hand them the bottle and say, you take one of these every day. Okay, okay, fine. They'd leave and two or three months later, they'd come back pregnant. <laughs> and the government was saying, you know, what's going on here? So they investigated and find out that the, the, the woman to take her bottle of pills home and hand it to her husband and say, take one of oh. these. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I am so boring. <laughs> take the pills and I give to them. <laughs> yeah, there, there were the funny point, uh, t funny times. There were the, the little Indian kids would come in, they were used to their diet and they'd try to give them something they needed and they didn't want that, they wanted to, you know, and it was hard. But uh, the, the one that was toughest was in 1976, was the earthquake. Which earthquake was that? So, <laughs> the earthquake, right? 76 or 76? Yes, 76. 76, yeah. And she was on duty. 7.8. Oh so, yeah, that was... One, one series was flat. All yeah. the houses. She was on duty at that time. Says that you'd walk down the hall and it looked like waves. And she got, you know, these uh, big plastic carts they haul laundry in. She stacked the baby's cribs in there to haul them out. I put the, with the, uh, another uh, eye nurse, I, we put all the babies, all the babies like this, it's, and the mothers with the... Yeah, with their IVs. Yeah, right. uh, the, uh, with the cough like that, and we said, put your hands in the... Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a so he said, He said, le cayo al techo? No, solo solo. Okay. Sea. Well, they were afraid the roof would cave in. That's why they took him out. Right. Solo. Fortunately, I didn't. Once was cracker. 
Oh, you know, they have adobe houses a lot, and uh, the, whenever they have an earthquake like that, the major uh, injury is a roof beam falls on people. In fact, we had a missionary. They were sleeping on the stage, I think, in a, in a chapel down there, uh, and that's what happened to him. A roof beam fell on him, left him paralyzed. He came home for a time, got some treatment, went back and finished his mission, and he, when he went home, he was a doctor, became a doctor. Uh -huh. Elder Ellsworth. <laughs>